Hey everyone, welcome back. Today I'm going to be making a roasted vegetable and gruyere quiche. Um, so there's multiple steps to this. Um, it's a little time consuming, but well worth it. Um, I am not going to go over um, how to make uh, the pie dough. I did that in my galette video, uh, which was one of the first few videos that I posted. If you want to know the recipe for this dough that I'm using today, go to there. Uh, the recipe is there. I will also probably post it uh, again with this post for the quiche. Um, but the same dough, um, very straightforward. You're going to make the dough in advance. You're going to let it hydrate and chill in the refrigerator. You're going to roll it out, which I've already done. I already have my, um, my pie dough pre-rolled out. Um, and so what we're doing today in order is I'm going to roast my vegetables first in a preheated oven. Um, after they're done, while they're, while they're roasting and then while they're cooling, I'm going to be lining my pie, my pie, uh, my pie shells into either, um, basically I have a pastry ring, a 10 inch by two inch high pastry ring and then I also have a pie dish. So I'm going to show you a couple ways um, to line to line those and then those are going to chill. While those are chilling in the fridge or you can do them in the freezer, um, we're going to make the quiche batter. After the pie dough, stick with me, after the pie dough has been frozen or is refrigerated for a couple hours, um, we're going to line it. I'm going to line it with some dried beans. You could also use pie weights. Um, some people use dried rice. Um, we're going to line it, the inside of that with that, we're going to uh, par bake it um, in the oven. And then it's going to come out. It's going to cool. Then we're going to throw our quiche batter in, our roasted vegetables in, our gruyere cheese, and then we're going to bake it all together. So there's like two, three, four steps to this, two, three, four, you know, whatever. Um, there's a few steps to this, but we're gonna start very simply with roasting some vegetables. Now I've got a half of a yellow bell pepper that I've sliced and a half of a red bell pepper. Also not gonna do that on here. If you're feeling lazy, buy pre-sliced vegetables. I won't judge you, I do it sometimes myself. And then I've got these little cherry tomatoes. Um, probably about like three to four ounces of cherry tomatoes. This is probably more vegetables than we're going to use, but I don't want to get to filling the quiche and then be like, oh shit, I'm out of vegetables. Um, so I pre-slice these. One of the reasons why we're roasting these is because of flavor. You get more flavor out of roasted vegetables than you do throwing raw vegetables into the quiche. Now you can throw the vegetables in raw. It's gonna add some moisture to the quiche to the quiche itself um, and it might get a little wet when you cut into it because you'll have raw tomatoes or raw peppers in it. Roasting them in advance is going to add flavor and it's going to also take out some of the moisture from them um, so you're going to get a better end product. So I suggest roasting the vegetables in advance. This is just some olive oil. You can use vegetable if you want. Um, I prefer olive oil. Um, my oven is preheated to 450 degrees. This is a sheet pan lined with parchment paper. This is sea salt that I'm using for this. You can also use table salt or iodized salt. I'm just using sea salt. You want to season as you go here. There is some salt and pepper in the quiche batter. There's a little bit of salt in the pie dough, but you don't want to put unsalted, unseasoned vegetables into the quiche batter because your, your quiche is going to be a little more on the bland side. I am a fan of seasoning as you go, so we're seasoning all the components so when they come together, you have a well-seasoned quiche in the end. So this is just some fresh black, freshly ground black pepper. And then I would normally use my hands, but since I'm doing this on camera and I don't want to get olive oil and stuff all over my hands, I'm going to use a spatula to kind of move this around. And just make sure that the tomatoes are coated, the peppers are coated with the salt and pepper and olive oil. Just give it a little shake. Again, 450 degree oven. 
for 15 to 20 minutes. The tomatoes will be burst. They will be a little brown. The peppers will be a little bit of brown. We're gonna go ahead and go with this. So while that is cooking, we're going to line our, our pies, um, or our quiches, rather. Um, in order to do that, I've already had my pie dough made in advance. I already have my pie dough rolled out. Um, you could technically start doing that now if you wanted to, but I did some prep work in advance just so everything kind of goes smooth, smoothly. Um, so you want to, as a reminder, make the pie dough at least three to four hours in advance let it hydrate in the fridge, let it chill, and then you can roll it out. Do not go from rolling a pie dough to lining a pie shell um, immediately because your dough is going to have some elasticity to it and it's gonna bite back on you. And so basically if you roll out your pie dough and then you try to line your pie shell at that point, it's going to shrink on you and you do not want your, your pie shell to shrink um, you want your dough to be nice and relaxed. So I pre-rolled this dough out a couple hours ago, and so it's nice and relaxed again. It's going to sit right into my liner, and it's not going to pull back on me. Um, you want to make sure that you take your time with this and that you don't rush it. If you rush it, your dough is going to tighten up, and you're going to end up with a very short, short quiche, and it might leak out, and it's just going to be a mess. So take your time. Make sure that you have the time to do this before you just jump right into it. Um, or if you want, you could always roll out your pie dough and then stick it in the freezer and just have it on hand already rolled out to pull out whenever you're ready to make your quiche. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and grab all those ingredients and I will be right back. So now we're here ready for the second part of this. I have a deep pie dish here. Um, you can also use an aluminum or a metal one if you have them. Um, and then I have what I really like to make quiche in is a pastry ring. I believe I said this was 10 inch, but I lied. I think this is a nine by two. So two inches high, nine in circumference. I like these, they're super easy. You can just make a nice flat, tall lip on it and you don't need to do all the decorative stuff. But if you have a pie dish like this, I'm gonna show you how to do the decorative stuff. There's nothing wrong with the decorative stuff. It's just that I got used to making quiche with this pastry ring uh, when I had my bakery because it was just easy and more efficient to make it this way than to do a decorative pie dough every time we made quiche. Um, so you can buy these on Amazon. You can also get them from, uh, I think, Webstraunt is a good website that has a lot of commercial kind of kitchen kitchen stuff you don't need to be um you don't need to be in commercial food to buy from them you can buy um, retail um, but good thing to have you can also make tarts with these and various other things so it's a good thing to have in the kitchen if you are a big baker like i am so i have a sheet pan here and then i've got my pie dough that I've already rolled out. Like I said, I did this a couple hours ago with a rolling pin. It's nice and thin. You can see here, like, you know, about an eighth of an inch or so, something like that. I've got two pieces. I'm going to use the smaller piece first. Before I make a mess of all of this, I'm going to put this larger second piece back here, covered, and I'm going to put this actually back in the fridge because I don't want it to get hot while I'm lining my other pie dough. You want to keep this dough cool, it's easier to work with. Um, So here's my pie dough. I'm just going to basically lay it over the pastry line. And then I'm going to take it and lift up on the edges. 
and kind of just work it into the edges. You want to get it so it's flush with the bottom and flush with the corners. You're going to have a decent amount of extra pie dough here that you can re-roll for another pie or another quiche or a galette. Um, but just slowly, slowly working this dough in and around. So I'm going to start trimming some of this extra dough off. It'll make it easier. I still want to leave some extra on the outside because I'm not finished getting the dough flush with the sides of the, the ring or with the bottom of this ring either. Also, I'm not, um, I'm not using any kind of oil or spray on this ring. It will come off relatively easy. I'm going to use a touch of spray on that pie on the pie, um, the ceramic pie dish, because I don't want the crust to stick into the bottom of it, but this, it will not stick to the bottom. So now that we've gotten rid of some of our extra stuff, I'm going to take my thumbs and make sure that the pie dough is flush to the bottom edge and nice. Make sure that there's no air, no pocket down here. If you do have some pocket, then this is going to shrink when it bakes. So you want to make sure that the dough is completely pushed against the edge of the ring and to the bottom of the sheet pan. And we're going to do basically the same thing with the pie dish that we're doing here. This side's a little shorter. Don't worry, it'll be OK. And honestly, the other easy thing about this is you can kind of leave a lip around. And then after it's baked, we just take a knife and then we slice it off nice and clean. And then you have a nice even lip, but you don't have to worry so much about making it perfect. I want a little bit of a lip to ensure that if, you know, while it's par baking before we fill it, that it doesn't shrink down on the sides. So I want it to kind of go over the side a little bit so it so it basically holds and doesn't shrink. Pie dough is a finicky, finicky thing that if you're not careful, it will shrink on you. And so this is some extra insurance. By leaving this lip around the top ring, it's extra insurance that the dough isn't going to pull down and slide down the side of this pastry ring while it's par baking. So I've gotten rid of more excess dough here, and I'm still kind of making sure that the dough is flush with the sides. It's flush with the bottom. If you end up with any holes, seal them with the, with the extra dough. Just push down and seal it. That way the quiche batter does not leak out. And I'm just kind of making this flush going around making sure that where it's folded and kind of wrinkly that it's all the same thickness so it bakes the same and I don't end up with raw pie dough or anything like that. And then I'm just kind of like gently folding it over the sides. So we have a nice lined pie dough shell here. I'll hold it up into the camera so you can kind of see. It. You can see how it's flush on the sides, down to the bottom. And we're going to dock the dough. 
So we're going to take a fork. Um, and you're just going to poke holes. Don't worry, I know we're filling this with quiche batter. It's not going to spill out. We just want to make sure that it does not bubble up and create any huge bubbles when we're par baking it. Um, so you're going to dock the dough to let the steam escape from it while it's par baking. And now this dough, if you're putting it in the fridge, I would let it sit in the fridge for at least an hour, maybe two. If you're putting it in the freezer, maybe 30 minutes. Depends on how cold your freezer is. Um, I'm going to put this in the fridge so it can chill. And then I'm going to line the other pie dough. So, this one's a little different. Not by much. This one I'm leaving the pie dough on this piece of parchment because it'll be easier to handle. Just making sure that it's nice and flat. Then I want to take my pie dish and I'm going to turn it over. I want to leave at least an inch to two inches. I would do two inches just to be on the safe side around the edges. Take a knife, it doesn't have to be perfect because you're going to cover a lot of this. And especially if you're using a deep dish, you want more because it's going to sit further down in the dish. So as I said, I'm just going to use a little bit of pan spray. Not a lot, I don't want it to slide down, but I also don't want it to stick. So just a quick little spray. Um, if you get too much on, just take a piece of um, paper towel, kind of wipe it down. So I'm taking this ring now. This dough is still cool to the touch. And I'm just going to kind of center it and do the same thing that I did with the other pie ring. I'm going to work it down and around. And you may prefer this method or this this uh, same method, basically, just a different kind of finish to it. So again, I'm pulling it out so I can push it down and make sure that it's flush with the base of the pie dish. If there's no big air bubbles in here. Um, I don't want this pie dough to slide down the sides of this dish. And once it's all flush, so we have these nice edges. So we're going to tuck these edges under and kind of hide them. So taking, if you can see, I take about a half inch and tuck under all the way around the dish. Flattening this up against the side, kind of going around in a circle. Kind of folded it under. So now we have vaguely we're getting close to our pie dough edge. If it's a little sloppy in sections, you can kind of like touch it and fidget with it and make it a little more pretty, but we're going to crimp it with our hands. So taking your thumb and your other thumb and index finger, you're going to basically crimp the edges. So I'm taking these on the outside, thumb on the inside, and pushing and going around. I do suggest if you're going to crimp like this and you want it to hold the shape a little bit better, 
to par bake when we go to par bake this with the beans that this pie dough be frozen when you throw it in the oven because as it heats up it's going to expand and kind of the butter is going to melt and it's going to lose its shape a bit but if it's frozen it'll start to bake on the outside before it has a chance to kind of melt and kind of blob out so to speak i know that's not a technical term but i'm using it um, so if the dough is frozen it's going to develop a crust on the outside and hold its shape a little bit better than if it were just very cold so if you want to keep these nice kind of like points even though this dough this dough is not going to be like these points are not going to be as sharp by any means but they will hold their shape a little bit better it's my timer for the vegetables um, it will hold its shape a little bit better the colder the dough is so I would suggest if you're doing something decorative like this have your dough relatively cold um, just make sure to after we crimp it that everything is still flush with the sides see I have an air bubble here I'm gonna lift it up a little bit and get that out um, just going back through and making sure that in the crimping process and all of that I did not pull the dough too far away from the edges of this pie dish. I just want to make sure everything's nice and in place and then we have our nice crimped edges of our pie. Again we're docking this that way when it par bakes it'll allow the steam to come out. And this guy I'm going to throw in my freezer. So I'm going to take my vegetables out. These are perfect. See they're nice and roasted. The peppers have nice black edges to them. They've got some darkness to the skin. The tomatoes have busted and they've got some dark char to them which is all nice flavor. So this is going to sit over to the side and basically cool while we make the quiche dough and we par bake the pie dough. So by the time that we get to making the final product of the quiche, the roasted vegetables will be room temperature and won't be hot anymore. So the oven was at 450. Now I'm going to turn the oven down to 350 because we're gonna bake, we're gonna par bake the pie shells at 350 for about 15 to 20 minutes. And then those after those have cooled, and we add the quiche filling to them, then we're gonna bake them again at 350 minutes or 350 degrees for about 40 to 45 minutes, depending on how deep the quiche is. So I'm gonna turn my oven down to 350 so that is ready to go. Um, or if you're taking time in between these steps, turn your oven off, and then when you're ready to par bake your shells, it's like I said, it's got to chill for a while. And if you don't want your oven on, I don't blame you. Um, just turn your oven back on, but make sure that it's at 350 for making um, the rest of the quiche in the final processes. So next step is going to be putting the quiche batter together. I'm going to get everything together, and I'll be right back. So I'm back and uh, we're gonna make the quiche batter. So there's a few different ways to do this. Um, you can use a stand mixing mixer. You can use an immersion blender. You can mix it by hand. Um, I'm more of a, I was always trained, so backtracking, backtracking. This is an old recipe that we used to make at this bakery that I worked at in Atlanta. The bakery is no longer in business. It's been gone for many, many years. The quiche recipe is still delicious, very solid. Um, I really like my quiche recipe. Most people really like my quiche recipe. At least one of you, Scott, I think you're subscribed. Um, you've had this quiche before in my old bakery. It's on par with, um, you know, my favorite quiche actually in San Francisco is by Bee Patisserie. The second favorite would be a tartine. Um, and uh, this is a pretty damn good quiche recipe too. So definitely on par with those. 
but I digress. So this is a this is a recipe I've had for a very long time. I'm used to hand mixing it. Um, you can use an immersion blender, um, or you can use a stand mixer to mix it. Um, there is definitely a technique to doing this, though. So um, so follow follow the instructions. Otherwise, you'll end up with with a lumpy quiche batter, and nobody wants that in the end. It will be fixable, but if you do it in order, it ends up going much easier. Um, so I have a, a mixing bowl. I have a chinois, which is a fine mesh strainer. Um, you can use any kind of strainer you have. I like to have a chinois. Um, it's good to have. I think they're about 20 bucks. They're pretty relatively available these days. Um, I also have this handy dandy picture pitcher that I'm going to strain everything into eventually. Um, and then I have a whisk and I have a spatula. So as far as ingredients go, um, I have 531 grams of eggs, which is about 10 large eggs. I have 470 grams of full fat sour cream. You can also, you know, this original recipe calls for creme fraiche. You can use creme fraiche. It gets to be very expensive. Um, sour cream is a perfectly acceptable substitute. You could probably even use Greek yogurt, although I've never used it. So if you use it and you don't like it, don't blame me. But it has a very similar consistency to full fat sour cream. And so I would I would assume that you could probably get away with using Greek yogurt, full fat Greek yogurt. You could use low fat, but I mean, it's quiche. Come on, treat yourself. How often are you going to be making this? So full fat sour cream. 470 grams. I also have 470 grams of whole milk. Again, you could probably cheese it and use low fat milk. I don't advise it. Um, if I'm going to eat quiche, I want it to be delicious. Um, I also have 85 grams of all purpose flour. Flour ends up being a binder in this that kind of like makes everything nice and creamy and thick. So, unexpected ingredient, but we are going to be using flour. Um, I also have uh, 10 grams of iodized salt. I'm using iodized salt because it dissolves a lot easier. Smaller crystals. Um, you can use sea salt. You might want to use a little bit more because it's a little less salty. But um, the iodized salt dissolves very nicely in the mixture. And then I also have 4 grams of fresh ground black pepper. You don't have to freshly ground it, grind it yourself. Um, you can use already ground pepper, but fresh ground adds a nice touch to it as well. And then um, my employees hated doing this, but it really makes a big difference. Fresh thyme. So it's kind of a pain in the ass, but this is 10 grams of fresh thyme. You can buy it in the, in the vegetable section in the little um, clamshells. Um, thyme, if you've never worked with fresh thyme, it comes on a stalk like this. And you want the leaves, you don't want to use, let me see if I can hold this up. You want the little leaves, you don't want the stalk itself. And so to basically get the leaves off, you take your, you hold it at the tip and you run your finger in the opposite direction of the leaves and you basically pluck off the leaves. It's a little time consuming, but it makes a huge difference. If you're not familiar with the flavor of thyme, it's a little lemony, a little herbal, um, but it makes a huge difference. I found out once that my employees did not like doing the time and so they started admitting omitting it from the quiche recipe No, sir. No, sir. Not a fan. So It takes a while to sit here and peel through some time Especially some of the batches of time you can buy in the grocery store kind of like It's annoying. I like the really thick bushy leafy hard stems which can be kind of harder to find a lot of times you find these like willowy, wispy kind of pieces, but trust me, fresh thyme makes all the difference in the world. Don't use dried thyme. You lose all the flavor. It loses all the magic. I'm not a fan of dried, dried thyme at all. Um, so if you don't want to deal with thyme, um, because thyme takes time, um, you could use fresh parsley, and that's a little bit easier to basically peel off the leaves and just chop it, um, and it gives you a nice fresh flavor to the quiche. So I've 
peeled off. I just wanted to show you how to do this. I have all these thyme leaves here. It's probably about half of one of those clamshells or so um, worth um, of the leaves kind of cleaned here. So we're gonna add this in the pepper at the end because we're gonna strain all of this. Um, and if we try to do that in the beginning, we're gonna strain it all out and it's gonna kind of be pointless. So without further ado, you want to do this in a certain order. You wanna add your sour cream and you wanna add your flour. Mix these together first because if you add your sour cream later or your flour later and you've already added all your egg and all of your milk, you're gonna end up with lumps of sour cream or lumps of flour floating around in your quiche batter. So you're just gonna gently mix this. With your whisk and make sure that all the flour and sour cream are mixed together. If you're doing this in a um, if you're doing this in a stand mixer with a paddle attachment, basically same method. Just put it in, put it in, and put the paddle attachment on and mix it on low until it's fully incorporated. Um, if you're using a immersion blender to mix everything. Um, Still start with this method, and then you'll basically switch over to the immersion blender later. So I'm gonna add some milk, not all of it, because if you add all the milk, then again, you're gonna be chasing around sour cream and flour. And you wanna make sure that you're slowly getting all of this mixed together. If you've ever tried to add cornstarch to something after it's hot and you've seen it all lump up, it's kind of a similar thing to this. You just wanna go slow, slow, slow. I'm gonna go ahead and add my salt now because that's gonna basically move through the holes of the chinois, so I'm not too worried about that, making it through the fine pieces of that. The reason why we're doing the chinois at the end is so we can get all these little you know, the little um, albumin or whatever they're called of the egg. I don't want those like thick little, you know, egg whitey parts. I'm trying to make like a really nice smooth batter in the end. So adding two thirds of the milk now and mixing. And it's starting to get a little more liquid and form and I'm a little less worried now about it breaking or having clumps of sour cream in this uh, because it's getting to basically a thinner consistency of where I run less risk of having clumps of flour or clumps of sour cream in. So just slowly adding this milk and working it in, taking time with it. So that's all the milk. And then I'm gonna add a few of the eggs. I'm gonna make sure that the yolks are busted. You could also break up all the yolks and the whites before you do this. I just didn't do it so you could visually see how many eggs there were in this. And add three or four more of the eggs. Again, making sure the yolks are busted. If for some reason they don't bust, you're gonna break them when they go through the chinois anyways. So, a little extra insurance. And then I'm gonna add the last of the eggs. So, I still have my thyme, I still have my fresh ground black pepper. I'm going to strain this mixture through the chinois first, 
before I add that, because if I add that now, it's basically going to strain it all out into the chinois, and I'm defeating the purpose of adding thyme or black pepper to this quiche batter. So this is pretty well mixed. You know, slightly yellow. So taking this and slowly pouring it through the chinois. If you do have some lumps of flour or sour cream, you can work them out here through the chinois. If you're doing the immersion blender, basically the blender, if you're you, at, at the point where you're adding the eggs, you would go with the immersion blender and start basically blending it. Um, and so I'm just gonna work this down through the chinois, which it actually pretty much goes through pretty easily on its own. And I don't even really have to do a lot of work. So you can see it's like kind of slowly straining through. There's a little bit of stuff in there. It's mostly all the thicker parts of the egg that I don't want. Um, I want this nice smooth batter. When they make, um, when the French make vichyssoise, which is basically like a potato leek soup, and it's very like, very smooth and velvety, they use the chinois to basically strain the potato and strain all the large potato starches and onion starches through it. That way you end up with a very nice, fine, smooth batter. So this is our quiche batter for all intents and purposes. I'm going to now throw in my freshly ground black pepper and my thyme. Now before you use this batter, you're going to have to mix it again because the pepper and the flour, the thyme will float to the top, but the pepper and the flour will sink to the bottom. And so you want to make sure that before you pour this into your, your, your shells, that you fully mix this again because otherwise all your flour is going to be in the bottom. Your thyme is going to be all floating up on the top and you're going to throw a bunch of thyme into your quiche shell and you're not going to get any of the flour which is going to make basically a less creamy version. The flour kind of helps kind of bind it all together so when it cooks you get a nice creamy um, filling quiche batter um, and it kind of helps keep the eggs together and keep them from scrambling because you don't really want to scramble the key I think to a good quiche is not overcooking it you want it slightly jiggly in the center if you cook it too long and it rises and puffs up you basically overcooked your egg and then you basically have this scrambled egg thing which isn't terrible you know it's still delicious in a sense but like in my opinion, a quiche should be nice and velvety smooth and creamy. So we've got our quiche batter. It's going to go in the fridge and hang out. Our next step is going to be taking the pie shells out after they've chilled. And we're going to line them with parchment paper or I'm going to use plastic wrap. Um, you do what you're comfortable with. In commercial kitchen, I always use plastic wrap. Um, but you can use parchment paper. Um, and then I'm gonna use dried beans, and then we're gonna par bake them basically in the oven for about 15 to 20 minutes. Get them lightly brown and nice and mostly cooked because they're gonna cook another 40 minutes with the quiche batter in it, but we're not gonna throw the quiche batter into raw pie shell because it's just gonna be a mess. So I'm gonna get all that together and then I'll be right back. back so the next step we're going to par bake our pie shells I have our frozen frozen pie shell right here it's been in the freezer for about 30 minutes to an hour putting it on a parchment line sheet paper this is how I do it I'll show you another way to do it um, 
I have a bunch of dried pinto beans. They were the cheapest beans to buy. You can also use dried rice if you have, if you're fancy and you have pie weights, use pie weights. Um, any of those are viable options. I'm using plastic wrap here. I will show you how to do parchment paper. Same process, basically. I am pulling the plastic wrap out and lining it against the pie dough, and I am pouring the dry beans into the pie shell. This is going to make sure the pie shell holds its form while it is being par baked. I'm just going to push down. It's coming up right to the edge of where I've, I've basically made the, the lip of the pie, and then I'm just gonna slightly fold it over. Um, I'm gonna take this and then just kind of gently and nicely wrap it. So this is method one, number one. This goes into a preheated oven, 350 degrees, 15 to 20 minutes. At about 15 minutes, well, probably more like 20 minutes, at about 10, between 10 and 15 minutes, I'm going to pull the beans out and let the bottom kind of get some color to it. I'll show you that as well. Into the oven. Now. Second pie shell. This is the one with the pastry ring. I've already got it on a sheet pan. I'm just going back around to make sure that it's not popping out or doing anything crazy. And making sure that it's centered in there. So if you want to use parchment paper, you basically just take parchment paper and then do the same method that we did with the beans and just make sure that it's completely lined. Pour the beans in do it that way. You might need to cut it in a certain size or shape to get it to fit. Um, that's the one reason why I like plastic wrap. Plastic wrap will not melt um, in a 350 degree oven. So I'm going to do this again. I was just merely demonstrating how that goes. More pies. This is basically another I had baked a quiche before and this was the plastic wrap from that. Sometimes you can reuse them, but they do shrink a little bit. Um, so same method, making sure that it's nice, pushed in, flush to the pie shell, and then just basically sealing it off. Because I, like I said, I'm going to par bake this for about 10 to 15 minutes, and then I'm gonna pull these beans out. So I wanna make sure that I have a means to pull these out. If you're using the parchment paper, you'll pull them out by the sides. Um, since I'm doing this, I'm just going to pull it out as one. And then this goes in. And then that goes in 15, 20 minutes. Like I said, at about 10 to 15 minutes, I'm going to make sure that the edges are nice and lightly brown. Not too dark because again, this has got to bake with the quiche batter for about 40 minutes. You don't want to get too much color in this step. You just want to make sure that the crust is nice and set and that it's not going to shrink or absorb most of the moisture from the quiche batter. So we're just getting a nice light browning on it. So when the top edges get some nice light browning to it, it means that it's kind of set and it's ready to pull the beans out. We're going to pull the beans out. We're going to let it bake for another five to ten minutes until it's a light brown on the base part and the outside um, looks like it's nice and starting to cook so i'll be back with that in just a moment all right real quick everyone i am going to take the bean uh, the dried beans out of these uh, quiche shells and i want to show you kind of what you're looking for now it's been about 15 minutes for me um, based on your oven and the temperature and all of that stuff, it might be a little less, it might be a little bit more, but you're kind of looking for it to look like this, as I'm about to show you. Um, it's very light brown in some spots on the edges but you can see that it's cooked. And then I'm just going to pull the beans out of the center. 
This is going to look raw still in the base here. So we're going to put it back in the oven for probably another 10 minutes, could be 15. I want to see some light browning on the base as well. Um, you can see on this guy, this guy got a little more color, thinner crust too, so a little more color. Um, you can see it shrunk a little bit, but it's still got some nice edges to it. Still up over the edge but it's some light brown around the edges again we're pulling the beans out it's still a little raw um, and we're gonna put it back in 10 to 15 minutes and then we'll be right back and I'll show you what they look like after they bake for another 10 to 15 minutes they'll be like nice and light brown on the bottom as well the edges the top edges will start to get a little browner then we're going to pull them out they're going to cool down a little bit i want to let them kind of chill out and then we're going to go ahead and bake um bake them with the quiche filling for probably it usually takes about 40 minutes or so give or take depending on the oven and everything but you know the quiche is kind of like it's almost like a cheesecake in a sense of where you want the center to be slightly jiggly it's going to finish cooking in the next five to ten minutes after you pull it out of the oven you don't want to wait until it's puffed up because when it's puffed up it's already overbaked um, so you want to sorry that's Shiloh walking around in the background if you can hear that um, but um, yeah so I'll explain all that a little bit further um, along in the video once we get to that stage but just some stuff to look out for as you go along and you're baking your quiche um, so see you soon so it's been another 10-15 minutes and I pulled these from the oven there's a light brown you see we've had a little bit of shrinkage here I probably could have left the beans in that one a little bit longer and there's some puffiness to the sides um, don't worry if you've got that. You can either leave it um, or you can take a spatula like this and kind of push it. It's basically just steam. Um, don't do your don't use your hands because you'll probably burn yourself. Um, although I'd probably use my hands because I'm not the brightest. Um, but I'm just kind of pushing this back toward the side. It doesn't always happen, but sometimes if you have this flaky dough and you get a lot of steam and um, it just kind of it kind of goes along with the, the process of flaky dough. Um, so you can see we still have some of the definition of the of the um, the indentations and the points around the edges, which is good. Um, we still have a nice deep about inch and a half, two inches in this pie dish. Um, I'm actually not too mad that it sunk down some because it's less quiche batter to fill. Um, and so this one too, it's a little bit browner. It was a metal ring, so it kind of bakes differently than ceramic. Um, you're gonna probably bake something longer in a ceramic dish, but it's gonna hold the heat for a lot longer. Um, the metal's gonna get a lot hotter, a lot quicker, and probably create more browning. Um, but I've got some air pockets on this too. I'm just going to push these back, kind of make some room. Um, I'm not going to clean up these edges yet. I'm going to wait till it's done. Um, so we're going to bake the quiche in this ceramic dish. And you're just going to basically serve it in the ceramic dish. There's two things you can do with this guy. You can bake the quiche in the ring. Um, sometimes if the quiche leaks out in the bottom, you run the risk of the ring getting stuck to the dough, to the crust, and blah, blah, blah. It becomes a little complicated. Um, what I do is I let this cool often, and then I trim the edges, and then I basically pull this up and get the ring off of it, and then I just bake it as is. It will hold its shape, um, so you don't have to worry about this um, kind of busting open. 
Um, but you can bake it with the ring around it if you want more support, or you can take it off before you bake it. Um, I think I'm going to take it off before I do, um, but I'll show you in the next segment kind of how we do that. And if you want to get a closer look at how it should look, um, you see it's like nice and light golden brown. The bottom is mostly baked. Um, you want it somewhere in, in this area of, of doneness. Um, I just don't want the tops to get too dark because this is going to bake for another like 40 to 50 minutes and it'll get you'll get some color on it it's not going to burn don't worry about it burning and if it does get close to burning we can always cover the edges with aluminum foil and that'll keep it from getting too much color on it um, but at this point it's a good color um, and we're ready to move into the next stage we're just going to let this cool probably going to let it cool for probably 30 to 40 minutes and then i'm going to come back and then i'm going to show you how to fill them and then finish baking them um, and so we'll be back soon thanks Hey everyone, I'm back, got a knife. Um, so the pie crusts have cooled. Um, I'm going to trim this, this edge that I created around this one. Um, I'm using a serrated knife. It makes a cleaner cut. You could also probably take a rolling pin and just roll it over the top and it'll kind of sever off the, uh, pardon my phone, uh, it'll sever off the top of the, uh, the crust, but I'm gonna use a severed knife. This one's fine as it is. And I'm just gonna trim this extra crust, kind of working the knife outwards away from the center because I don't want it to crack. I don't wanna run the risk of cracking this and tearing it because then it'll create basically um, a place for the, the, the quiche batter to leak out. So I'm taking this and I'm basically cutting outwards with it, just going around the edges um, and trimming it up and making it look nice and pretty. The oven is preheated to 350 degrees. I've got my quiche batter over here. I've got my roasted vegetables and I've got some cheese. So these little crispy bits, you can save them and eat them, do whatever you like to with them. Um, they're pretty delicious. Sprinkle them on a salad, I don't know. I just used to go walk around the bakery and basically eat them. Um, so, pie crust one, pie crust two, voila, that comes right off, super easy. Not much to it. So as I said, um, this this is the quiche batter, and you can see the time has floated to the top of it. Show you. The time is floating in the top, and the black pepper and the flour is sitting in the bottom. So I'm going to basically take a uh, spatula and. Stir it. Make sure it's nice and mixed. And then I'm going to pour. You're not going to want to put the filling in yet. If you put the filling in before, your quiche batter is probably going to push it all to one side or the other. So I'm gonna pour my quiche batter in. It's about halfway. About halfway. It's my oven, my oven is ready. And then now I'm gonna take my, my roasted vegetables. Um, I've got my peppers and I'm just going to kind of place them around in my tomatoes. So there's probably like a pepper in just about every slice or so. Just throw in a handful of tomatoes. This 
actually kind of perfect for two. Now, if you're using, if you wanted to use spinach, you could saute the spinach um, prior to. Um, I've used the spinach raw as well, but like I said, it adds a little bit extra moisture to it. Um, I like to cook out some of the moisture before. And throw in roasted garlic. If you're going to do bacon or something in this, um, you want to cook your bacon before putting it in the quiche because it's not going to cook in the quiche and you're just going to basically have raw bacon floating around um, inside your quiche. So make sure you cook um, your bacon before if you have any like uh, raw meat or anything you want to cook that before. Um, you could use a roasted chicken or something like that that's very good. So I have some Gruyere cheese here. Um, you could basically um, shred it over top. I'm just going to basically take this vegetable peeler and just cut these slices of Gruyere on these because that's just kind of how I'm feeling today. So I have these nice long strips of Gruyere to go on top. You want to use Parmesan cheese. Parmesan cheese is great. Um, cheddar is good as well. I just happen to have some Gruyere. I always like to have some cheese in my quiche, but if you don't like cheese, then don't add cheese. Um, okay, so these are ready to go. The oven is preheated to 350, and um, basically we are going to throw these in I'm going to start it at uh, 25 minutes and then I'm going to rotate it. It's probably going to cook more on one side than the other. And then I'm going to rotate it and then we're going to um, check it, see how well it's done, and then probably put it on for another 15, 25 minutes. And then um, I'll be back. So this is the first quiche. Uh, it's actually the, um, the one that was in the pastry ring. Um, it cooked a little bit faster than the one in the ceramic ring. Um, it's hard to see on the video or on the camera, but there's a slight jiggle in the center um, and a slight jiggle to it. Um, you definitely don't want to cook it too much more than this. There's some light browning and then you can see the nice, the nice ring of, of brownness on the crust. Um, and so this is pretty much it. It took me... This is a little thinner than my normal quiche. I would probably fill it up a little bit more, but based on the size of the two quiches and, and the number amount of batter that I had, I split it in two. And so this took about, it only took about 25 to 30 minutes in my oven. Um, normally I fill a little bit more, and so that's why I said it takes about 40 minutes. But you do wanna check it and make sure that it's not, um, it's not too, uh, too underdone or too overdone. I'll show you. I'll go ahead and pull out um, the one in the ceramic pie dish so you can kind of see what it looks like before, almost before it's done. So this is the other one. It's a little too wiggly in the center. You can see you don't want it that wiggly. You can still tell it's kind of uncooked. Um, so this one's probably got you know, at least another five, five to seven minutes on it. Um, but that is, that's quiche. Um, you basically want to let it cool. Um, and when it's warm, you can go ahead and cut it and serve it. You'll cut it like a clock. Um, so if you want to know how to cut something, um, you basically want to cut at 12 and six right here. And then at basically nine and three, and then I'll give you four pieces and then you basically cut those four pieces in half again. And then you basically will end up with like eight pieces of quiche. Um, so thank you everyone for staying and watching and for your continued support. Hope you get to make this quiche uh, this holiday season or just whenever. 
it's great for dinner it's great for brunch um and so yeah if you end up making it please tag me i'd love to see it and thanks again take care